Hey guys, Dr. Whitney Bowe, board certified dermatologist. And in this video, we're gonna be talking all about SPF. I'm gonna be answering questions like, if I'm indoors all day, do I really need sunscreen? And what's the difference between an SPF 15 and 30? And like, what's the deal with SPF 100? Do I really need it? Okay, so let's dive right in. So what is SPF? SPF stands for sun protection factor. And it has to do with the UVB protection offered by a particular sunscreen. So an SPF of 15, blocks 93% of UVB rays. An SPF of 30 blocks 97% of UVB rays, and an SPF of 50 blocks 98% of UVB rays. Now SPF 100, which you actually may see, they're actually coming out with those now, um, blocks 99% of UVB rays. So you may be asking, okay, so you know what SPF do I really need? Well, it depends on the situation. So I'm gonna dive in and answer so many of the questions that you guys are sending me about what sunscreen to choose in what circumstance. Question number one, if I'm going outside and I'm gonna be outside for a little while, you know, I'm going to the beach, I'm going on a long walk, how often do I really need to reapply my sunscreen? So I recommend reapplying outdoors every two hours if your skin is dry. Now, if you're sweating or if you're swimming, then you actually have to reapply even more frequently than that. Now, this is a circumstance, guys, where SPF really matters. Those higher numbers are better. So if you're gonna be outdoors, you do wanna look for an SPF 30 or above. So the next question I get asked a lot, especially during the pandemic, is Dr. Bo, if I'm indoors all day, do I really need to wear sunscreen? So the answer is yes, but in this case, SPF doesn't matter. So when you're indoors all day, the only light that you're being exposed to is gonna be UVA light, which is penetrating through window glass. And you are being exposed to that if you're not working in a dark basement, if you're anywhere near windows. So you do wanna look for the words broad spectrum on your sunscreen label, right? So the SPF, which only has to do with the UVB, not so important here, but broad spectrum, where you're definitely being covered against those UVA rays, super important here. What else do you need to think about when you're indoors? You have to think about blue light. So blue light is coming not only from the LED lights in our, in our ceiling, but it's coming from the lights in our screens, it's coming from our Zoom meetings, it's coming from our television screen, from our phones, from our laptops. And we know that blue light can cause free radical damage and lead to aging and hyperpigmentation. So what do you wanna do in addition to looking for a broad spectrum sunscreen is you wanna layer a vitamin C serum underneath because that antioxidant is gonna help protect against the free radical damage from the blue light. And one other thing you wanna think about is to look for products that contain green iron oxides. So where are you gonna find iron oxides? Iron oxides are basically that pigment that makes makeup look like makeup. So it can be found in a tinted moisturizer, in a tinted sunscreen, or it can be found in foundation. So long as you're getting some iron oxides, you're helping to protect your skin from blue light all day long. Okay, Dr. Bo, I spend most of my day indoors, but I kind of like to go outside for a little, you know, a little walk or maybe a little lunch break. So do I really need to reapply my sunscreen every two hours? So in this case, the answer is no. So you wanna apply your sunscreen first thing in the morning, and then you do wanna reapply it right before you head outside for that little break or that little walk, okay? But there's absolutely no need to keep reapplying your sunscreen every two hours all day long when you're indoors. So are moisturizers that also act as sunscreens enough or do I need a dedicated sunscreen on top of that? So the answer is that moisturizing sunscreens, in my opinion, are really convenient and they can be great products so long as you use them correctly. So studies show that people who use a moisturizing sunscreen, meaning a two-in-one product, actually apply less of that product than if they're just given a sunscreen. So you always have to err on the side of safety and apply more than you think you need if you're using a moisturizing sunscreen. So you can get closer to the SPF that's actually on the label, okay? The other thing you wanna keep in mind is that when you're using a moisturizer sunscreen, a lot of people sort of just put it on their face. It's sort of like their moisturizer and then they're gonna put on you know, their makeup on top or what have you. But you have to remember to also apply it to your neck, your chest, and your ears as well if you're gonna be using one of those combination products. Another good rule of thumb, just because we know that people tend to apply less moisturizing sunscreens when compared to just traditional sunscreens, 
is that you might want to think about layering another product with sunscreen on top, whether that's a setting powder or a foundation that has SPF, just to give yourself a little bit of added insurance. How do I know if I'm applying enough SPF to my face? So a good rule of thumb is that you want to apply about a teaspoon worth of sunscreen to your face, your neck, and the V of your chest, okay? If you're applying less than a teaspoon, then you're probably not getting the SPF on the label. So if the, if the label says, say, like an SPF of 30, you might only be getting like an SPF of 10 or 15. What sunscreen is safe to use during pregnancy? So that is such a great question. And I actually have a video all about pregnancy and skincare right over here. I'm also going to be coming out with a video that talks all about mineral versus chemical sunscreens and which ingredients are safe and effective, you know, and what, what to look for on the label. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that one because that's gonna definitely be an important uh, video as part of this sunscreen 2021 update. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.